Okay, let's do a little mystery and see if you can figure this one out. This is ferrofluid expansion number 21. And you may not be able to see back there, so I will try to shed a little light on the matter. This particular test is kind of dense. But you'll see our ferrofluid and our suspension coming centripetally in a vortex-like formation, although it's very unclear, but you might be able to see it. But it is entering at the dead center centripetally at approach, but once it reaches approach, it spreads out to the centrifugal point. Remember, just like steel, I mean, just like iron balls, ferrofluid acts the same way. It's under uh, dielectric coherence, not increased dielectric capacitance. Under dielectric voidance at distance to the centripetal. But since it has no dielectric capacitance, as soon as it reaches the base, you may not be able to see it, but it will spread out to the centrifugal edge. Not a very clear demonstration, so let's take a look at the same thing that will be clear. Here we have our block magnet. This is just a little copper coated steel ball. Will not rest at the centripetal point. Will only rest at the centrifugal point. If I try to make it sit at the center, center, uh, centripetal point, it is being pushed away by the returning centripetal. That is the dielectric inertial point, centripetal on either side, and dielectric inertial plane, centrifugal point, under magnetic induction, which is dielectric coherency of the iron ball, copper-coated iron ball. So, what about our magnet? This is a little ball magnet. This has dielectric capacitance. Both have dielectric co uh, coherency, but one has dielectric capacitance increase. Dielectricity to dielectricity. Remember, magnetism displaces dielectricity. Magnetism does not attract anything. Magnetism displaces dielectricity. So, you see we here a little iron ball, let go of it, immediately jumps to a centrifugal edge where magnetism is most predominant. Explaining this is slightly more difficult, although very simplex, what I've already explained to you. This is space to space. Counterspatial to counterspatial. So, let's remove our little magnetic ball. A tough little one too. Here we have just another little iron ball taped to a piece of string. And you'll notice that it will approach the centripetal point as it starts spinning right. If you're able to look over top, you'll notice that it is dead center, but once it gets close, let's do that again so you can see it better. Once it gets close, it will. Let's spin it up so you can get a better demonstration that it's that it is approaching at the centripetal point. Remember, this is an iron ball under dielectric coherence. So, it is under magnetic induction, which is dielectric coherence, but there is no increase in dielectric capacitance at the interatomic. So, once we actually hit, you notice it immediately went to the centrifugal edge. Yes, let's see if you can explain that one, which I already kind of did, but I didn't give you the full explanation. Now you have to ask yourself why. Okay, so we know that the iron ball goes from our centripetal point to our centrifugal where magnetism, any Gauss meter will show you that the centrifugal edge, of course, is the highest point of, uh, of uh, uh, your highest Gauss meter, also the centripetal point, but that's uh, centripetal returning magnetism, i.e. the dielectric field. But your highest Gauss rating is along your centrifugal, and next highest is at your centripetal. This is all the intermediate zone which is where magnetism actually reciprocates. It doesn't make it across the barrier of the dielectric inertial plane. It will reciprocate to the dielectric inertial plane, leaving from the intermediate zone. That is the false premise of the misunderstanding of a magnet having four poles, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, right to the edge. So, let's look at that again. This may seem very boring, but if you understand this concept, then you'll understand better how a magnet works, why it works, why dielectricity voids dielectricity 
what you would call attraction, magnetic attraction, does not work from magnetic attraction. It works from dielectric voidance or counter voidance. So let's bring our iron ball close. You'll notice that it will spin up immediately at the dead center of the block magnet, but once it hits the magnet, it would spin faster, obviously, if it wasn't coated in tape. It would actually run to the edge. So let's do that one more time. I did it for you a couple minutes ago. Immediately to the edge. It approaches the centripetally, but actually as it makes contact with, immediately before it makes contact, it immediately accelerates to the centrifugal edge. So I've shown that to you three times. I'll show it to you again. It's kind of hard to demonstrate because I'm obviously suspending an iron ball with a piece of thread with a piece of tape on it. And I'm trying to hold the camera with the other hand and it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I should stop making these videos at 3 o'clock in the morning. So, you'll notice dead center and if I let it go, boom, right to the edge. So now we know why. But knowing why is just a more elaborate description. We have to understand, have to have genuine comprehension why. Descriptions are not explanations, obviously. Descriptions are not explanations. So, why will a magnet, another quote-unquote magnet, which doesn't have just increased dielectric coherency, because it is increased dielectric capacitance as it was created. Why does it want to rest perfectly at the center? And our steel ball, our little iron ball, will not. Why? What's the answer? Remember, magnetism does not attract anything. Magnetism displaces. That is the conjugate field of the double hyperbola of magnetism and the centripetal, counterspatial, inertial, as you'll see in some electrical texts called electrical inertia, nature of dielectricity. So now we have a deeper description why, but the explanation still needs unfolding. Obviously and logically so. All we have now is just an elaborate description. We understand the why, but we don't really know why. Now here's a question that nobody asked me in uh, all the forums that I post this stuff on, and it's the most logical and obvious question. Why, since magnetism is dielectric radiation, why does not magnetism operate like any other type of either particle radiation or dielectro-electromagnetic radiation, or what you call light or EM? Why does it not operate like that and just go out? Why does it have to reciprocate to the other side? Well, I answer that in the third edition of the book. So that's the most, not the most important question, but it's a very important question. Why must magnetism terminate centripetally or terminate on itself if it doesn't have enough velocity along the dielectric inertial plane if it, if it uh, converges from the intermediate zone? So why doesn't just magnetism just go out and stay out like any other type of radiation that we know of? Well, the answer is actually rather logical and simplex, but We'll have to explain that in the third edition of the book. We'll have to leave a few things unanswered. And it's certainly not like I'm selling the book. I'm trying to profit off of anything because the book is free. So I'm certainly not trying to squeeze a nickel out of anybody. Anyway, thanks for watching. And just ponder these things. Comprehension is a wholly different beast from descriptions. Children and fools make descriptions. Explanations for the, are for the wise and for the intelligent. For those who have genuine knowledge and comprehension. Thanks for watching.